Modding has always been one of my favorite things to do when playing any of the Fallout games. I can add a plethora of new content, whether it be weapons, armor, enemies, overhauling the difficulty, overhauling the graphics, fixing any of the bugs that the game may have, pretty much anything you can think of. So that's why today I'm going to ask if you can beat Fallout New Vegas with only a butter knife. I of course named myself Mrs. Buttersworth, as that's the most fitting thing you can do for this run, and made the biggest monstrosity humanly possible with New Vegas' character editor. My special stats were focused on strength and luck, because I figured I would need crits to survive this run. For tag skills, I went with medicine, melee weapons, and repair, as the butter knife is kind of hard to keep repaired. For traits, I went with skilled and good natured, and went out into good strength. The butter knife comes from one of my weapon mod packs that I have installed for Fallout New Vegas. I've seen it a couple times during runs that I've done in the past, and off the top of my head, the only way to obtain it is either through the mailbox, like I found in the mailbox run that I did recently, or off of a dead raider's corpse. So that was my first go-to, as I can't really kill anyone without a butter knife. Except that's not true, because while resetting in good springs to hopefully spawn a butter knife in one of the mailboxes, I pulled out a shotgun and offed Malcolm Holmes. I don't care that I failed the challenge, it was well deserved. I did find one in Doc Mitchell's mailbox, which has some weird lore implications. I'm not entirely sure why Doc Mitchell needed a butter knife delivered to him, but after buying some supplies from Chet, I headed off towards Prim, as I wanted to test the butter knife on some convicts. So there wasn't a whole lot that I could do with the butter knife being a butter knife. I think it started out with a whopping 5 damage, even though my melee skill was nearly at 50. As you can see, it was like 7 or 8 hits just to take down a regular powder ganger without any armor. It was pretty amusing that some of the convicts ended up killing themselves on some landmines before I got to Prim though. The convicts were actually one of the most challenging things that I had to deal with in any early game part of a Fallout challenge. I nearly died here probably 6 or 7 times, which is mostly my own fault because I kinda sold my armor early on and didn't bother to buy any from Chet because I wanted to save my caps, so I kinda only have myself to blame for being so squishy here and running through a whole bunch of healing items. But after booping Deputy Beagle because I didn't feel like doing that questline with Prim, I headed off towards Mojave Outpost. Not entirely sure what I planned on doing there, as I wasn't siding with the NCR this run, but I bullied a small rad scorpion on the way there, and then his entire family showed up, and I ran the hell away, because I didn't really feel like dealing with that. I bought some stuff from a traveling merchant, mostly just sold off things because I wanted the caps, used the caps that I got to repair the leather armor that I found, talked to Ranger Ghost so that I could get an easy quest from her to go to Nipton. On the way there, I got bullied by some jackals, one of which had a ripper and promptly killed me with it because I had pretty much no defense against that. It too shot me, even though I had leather armor, which was kind of depressing, but my second time around, he spawned with a power fist instead of a ripper, not entirely sure why, but I just bullied some scorpions and then ran over towards Nipton. Some lady ran up to me for some reason, so I killed her because she annoyed me by getting in my way, as well as off Oliver Swanick because he deserves it. It's my lottery ticket now. I talked to Vulpus so that I could progress Ranger Ghost's quest line, as I wanted to do that quest just for a bit of easy experience right at the beginning. It wasn't worth a whole lot, but pretty much anything helps at this point. I also got attacked by a group of regular people on my way down, which nearly killed me a couple times. Not entirely sure why, but one of them ended up having a butter knife on their corpse, so you know what? They're cool in my book because they carried the legendary butter knife. It was at this point that I kind of deviated from the way that I normally play these runs. I just kind of wandered around looting things and exploring a little bit instead of just beelining the main quest like I normally do. Other than getting into some fights with some powder gangers and, you know, insects and other random assorted enemies like I usually do, I didn't do a whole lot. I just kind of wandered around and went wherever the game felt like taking me. I did stop in and buy some more supplies from Doc Mitchell though before heading back out on my adventure. I fast traveled back to Nipton and started heading east towards Camp Searchlight. I bullied some raiders on the way there because I wanted their items to sell for armor later. 
Not a whole lot else happened on the way out there. I just stopped by a couple smaller locations to gather up some loot to sell for armor once I made it to the strip. I did find another group of raiders that ambushed me during the night though, which was kind of spooky because they had really damn good weapons. Uh, I remember one of them having a 5.56 pistol, 44 magnum revolvers, stuff like that. It was pretty spooky and I did nearly die a couple times, but I did make it to Camp Searchlight, which I just kind of stopped by since I haven't been here in a long, long time. I did kill some random dude's dog and then I, you know, turned around and killed them because I wanted their leather armor as mine was pretty close to being broke at that point and I just needed that little bit of extra durability on my way to the strip. Karma bit me in the ass though because I got jumped by a couple feral ghouls and then spent way longer than I should have trying to kill some nameless guy outside Novak for his combat armor. I was swinging away at him for probably two minutes with the butter knife before he did eventually go down. I tried to assist a couple raiders that were dealing with some ghouls, but the ghouls weren't interested in me helping them, so I got nearly killed by them and then just killed a couple random people for their shit. I also stopped by and played peekaboo with a couple raiders before seeing that there were three of them and I ran the hell away because I was pretty low on healing items at this point and I didn't feel like wasting any. I killed the lonesome drifter again because I wanted to see if his body would freak out, it did not. And then I went over to Boulder City because I haven't been here in a long time and started killing all the great cons inside. Somehow I managed to do this without any of the NCR troopers dying, which is different. I don't normally have that good of luck. I got bullied by some more raiders outside on my way towards the strip, which was pretty fun, and then found Victor's body dead by a train station. Not sure why he's here and dead, but you know... After that, I decided while I was in the area to just discover the Eldorado substation, as I would probably use it for later. I hadn't really decided what faction I wanted to side with quite yet, but I figured that, you know, it would be useful to have for the most part. I got annoyed by a fiend that had an incinerator, and then took out my annoyance on some NCR deserters that were nearby, and eventually made it over to the Gunrunners, where I bought some combat armor, and then just headed off towards Freeside. I did something abnormal while I was in Freeside, which was stopping by and talking to Julie for some healing items, and then went over towards Oris and just decided to show him that the butter knife is better than metal armor. After that was done, I went off towards the Kings and debated doing their questline, but decided it was funner to kill them all with a butter knife instead. The only one of note that took any time to go down was Rex, because, you know, it's Rex. He has a lot of defense, so other than that, I booped old Ben and then headed off towards the Strip. My first stop was dealing with the Omertas, which were annoying as hell because all three of them that were up front had melee weapons, so I was pretty much getting blocked the entire time. I then headed off towards the tops and started slaughtering everyone there. Swank was an absolute lad because he had a butter knife on him, so he became my favorite chairman immediately. The rest of the chairman went down without too much of an issue, including Benny, and then I was off on my next step, which was killing George and yeeting myself over the fence into the boomers camp. Nothing much of note happened with the boomers other than me harassing a senior citizen, which is, you know, pretty normal for me. And then I went back to Good Springs where I killed a couple people for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, and then I headed off towards Hidden Valley. I figured I should just go deal with the Brotherhood early because I didn't feel like talking to Mr. House 12 times and then dealing with the Brotherhood. Yeah, they weren't here, so I tried to quick save, quick load my way through the wall for about two or three minutes, which didn't work. So I had a fantastic idea. I headed back to 188 Trading Post and picked up Veronica, who kindly let me into the Brotherhood bunker. After that, I told her to piss off because I didn't want a companion for this run and started stealing all the keycards that I would need to self-destruct the bunker. With the Brotherhood set up to explode and I ran out of there, not really fighting anybody because I wasn't strong enough to deal with the Brotherhood with a butter knife, I went back towards Camp Searchlight and headed off towards Cottonwood Cove so that I could head to the fort. Once I'd gotten to the fort, I immediately headed to the weather bunker so that I could start clearing out all the Protectrons and robots inside and upgrade the Securitron army for Mr. House. It was pretty much at this point that I decided I wanted to side with Mr. House because I didn't feel like walking all the way to Red Rock. That and I was too lazy to side with the NCR, even though I'd killed pretty much everyone that the NCR needed dead for their questline, except for, you know, Red Rock. I got to sit through my absolute favorite part of Fallout New Vegas and listen to Mr. House explain his Securitron upgrades to me, and then had a really weird glitch when I went to talk to Mr. House. This is not sped up footage by the way, you can see my cursor and the quest logo moving at normal speed. I'm not sure why the dialogue was freaking out with Mr. House, but he told me to go off to the Eldorado substation, which I didn't do. I actually went back to Hidden Valley and started killing off all the centaurs so that I could go up to Black Mountain and bully Tabitha by locking her in a corner 
with the Super Slam perk because I just wanted to do some extra shit while I was out. I then went to the Alorado substation and had the fastest run through of that place that I've ever had. I was in and out in about three seconds, which was kind of fun. Off to the second battle of Hoover Dam, the first people on my list to die were the cons. I then went over and bullied the Centurions nearby, a couple of which were scary because they had thermic lances, which eat through my armor like it's nothing. The heavy troopers inside were pushovers. I mean, it's the NCR. Come on now. Of course, with that done, I continued my push towards the Legates camp after upgrading everything that I needed to do in the dam. Nothing stood a chance here because there was like six Securitrons here and they pretty much swept everything before I could get close enough to it. Of course, I got noob tubed by my own Securitron when I got to the Legates camp and went off to fight the Legate. Yeah, I didn't have enough speech to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, so this fight consisted of me just trying to knock everyone on the floor without dying. The Legate also ran away about halfway through the fight, as he normally does for me. I'm not sure why he does that, but he does for some reason. He also took the Martyr Dome perk from Modern Warfare 2 and dropped a grenade as soon as I killed him, which was very annoying. I got put in the no-no corner until I killed all the Legionnaires. General Oliver arrived, who I pissed off by talking to him and talking down on him. I killed him, and then Mr. House let me have my fun after defeating the General of the NCR. And that was it. I beat Fallout New Vegas with only a butter knife. I also got the weird outro screen again for some reason. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave any suggestions in the comments below. And if you feel like helping support the channel just a little bit, I will be linking my Patreon. So feel free to stop by there if you're interested in that. Have a wonderful day and thank you guys for stopping by.